Jeff, thank you very much for calling me. My dear friends, fellow Toastmasters, Arnold, shalom. Shalom. When I first came through the door this morning, Janice was there. And as soon as I saw her, I had a VOM red dog. I had that VOM rush. I knew that I was home. There was no question about that. And PJ tells us that it's the experiences in life, the challenges that make us grow. And, and Carl, I want to thank you for the prelude to what I'm going to share with you, because he's telling us now that's our commitments that help us to grow, the Toastmaster manual that we read. So Carl, your thoughts were perfect. We could have called up and organized ourselves. And I want to thank you for the extra time so I can BS a little extra, a few more minutes to talk. Your thoughts is what we want to talk about this morning here. And I'm not sure what the grammarian is going to say, whether it should be our thoughts or, or your thoughts. But I would ask you now, turn over a piece of paper, maybe your evaluation form, and I will wait a minute, all of you please, and write down my thoughts. My thoughts. I'm asking you to write it because this Sharing this morning is not about our thoughts. It is about my personal thoughts and how those thoughts affect our lives. I typed on Google. I love Google. I typed in there, you know, your thoughts I put in there. <clears throat> oh, man, it, it just, they were like posters everywhere. Just, but I counted them, three to 400 posters. There's money in this whole subject. And some of the thoughts that captured me just briefly, one of them was that negative thoughts never give us a positive outcome. Never. And scripture tells us, as you sow, so you shall reap. And the first principle I want to share with you is the law of the harvest. The law of the harvest is pretty simple. It belongs to someone else. I'm plagiarizing it. I need to do that with respect. It simply says that if you're a farmer and you want to harvest in the fall a beautiful crop of corn, the obvious thing that will come to your mind is, well, you better plant the corn. You better plant the corn and nurture it and get it to grow and give it water. And then you can have that harvest. Corn or wheat, it makes no difference. If you want to be a rancher, you need to have the cattle. You can't one day go to the stockyard and say, I'm going to sell 100 head of cattle. And you look around and you don't have any cows. So the law of the harvest simply says, if you want to harvest anything, you must begin to put it into the ground. There's a corollary to this. If you plow your field and plant nothing, <clears throat> if you think nothing will grow, let me give you an honest to God story. 1972, June the 22nd, I bought a new house in North Scottsdale, Cactus Road. <clears throat> there was nothing out there. It was barren desert. It wasn't even a street. It was a second house in a complex, and there were all the lots around us were just full of pool dirt, and they spread this stuff around. No streets were down there. I worked on my yard. I had this vision of how this yard was going to go. We'll talk about that in a second. And sure enough, on the 22nd of June, God had other plans. It rained. I mean, it rained. The roof paper came off my house. Three inches of rain poured through my roof. It was a disaster. And the yard flooded, completely flooded. So we left. For three months, we were gone in a little rental house. And when we came back, that pristine yard of mine was this high in weeds. Ugliest weeds I've ever seen. They were big, like trees. I mean, I'm thinking, where did they come from? I've never even seen them in Arizona before. Not tumbleweeds. They were almost like little trees. So I spent another month pulling these guys out of the ground. The lesson is pretty clear to me that if you plow a field and plant nothing, Janice, what's going to grow there? No. Weeds. <laughs> weeds, absolutely right. Absolutely right. Weeds are going to grow. And the, the message we're going to come back to is very simply that your mind is very much like a garden, very much like a field. The second thought that I want to share with you and we're going to tie these all together. It's going to be vision engineering. And I believe it was developed by a guy in Mesa, a dentist, who put a little program around it. And some of us are engineers here, or we're engineers here. 
And it's a very, very simple concept. Vision engineering simply means seeing what you want to see. What do you want to become? I worked a lot on coming here today. I thought about it. I thought about coming here, meeting a greeter. I thought about getting up early in the morning. And you say, well, how, who gets up early in the morning? I do every day. I have to go to the bathroom. I mean, that's just the way it is, you know. <laughs> 4 30, 5 o'clock, I got to get up. But today it was more purposeful. I got up, I back down again. Do I really want to do this? But I had this vision of dressing up, pretending, putting on a tie, coming here, and being a Toastmaster and giving a speech to my good friends. I had that vision in my mind. Now I'm here, and I'm simply living out the vision that I had. That's what our life is. Do you have a vision for your life? If you have a vision for your life, that vision will get in your mind. And little by little, that vision, day after day, you'll work it out. I have a vision of my family coming together. I've been working on it for years. And I can tell you now, they're all back together. All these domestic divorces and the drama, all those things that seemed so traumatic at the time. And you were here, Toastmasters, as I went through those things with you. They faded all away. The vision was always there. And my children are coming together. I've got children and I've got grandchildren. I've got a great granddaughter now going to college. That has been my dream, get these kids to college, all of them. And we've made that come true. How do they fit together? How does my thoughts, your thoughts, our thoughts, my thoughts, how does the harvest come together? How does visioneering come together? You can write this down. My thoughts are seeds. My fellow Toastmasters, your thoughts are seeds. Now online they'll tell you, look, ignore your thoughts, they're like little fluffy winds going by, little clouds going by. Sure, we have these fleeting thoughts, but the thoughts we're talking about are the thoughts that are the seeds of your life, the one that you subconsciously nurture, the ones that you think about every day and you inculcate them in the way you behave. They become part of your life. And pretty soon they are you as we come to this club every week. It's part of our life we come here. What you think about, you will become. What you sow, you shall reap. People say to you, a penny for your thoughts. How would you answer that question? How would you answer that question? Charge him dollars. <laughs> Charge him dollars, a penny for your thoughts. When we realize that our thoughts are the seeds of our life, they are the inheritance of our children. They are priceless, absolutely priceless. If you say a penny for your thoughts, said I said, my thoughts are the heritage of my family. They are priceless. They are not for sale. My fellow Toastmasters, I am so glad to be here. And I give you, Gannis, the plenary indulgence for all your little sins. <laughs> Mr. Toastmasters. <laughs>